We'll go ahead and get started, and uh, what uh, we want to do today is have some open conversation, but uh, what we are doing here is part of a program that the Painted Sports Foundation is, is putting together, and we call it our Legends Series, and we uh, place an emphasis on past athletic events, athletic people, okay, from the Painted area. We've done a couple of these before. Our intent is to put these on, put a web link out on our website to a YouTube uh, area and then let people go and, and watch these. You may have relatives that are uh, that are in other parts of the country. They, you know, they're just you know as close as a, a finger type away from uh, you know accessing these types of things. We haven't got them out there on YouTube yet. We've got two of these. This will be the third one in our series. What we're going to do today is talk about uh, really two fold. One is uh, we're talking about the evolution of pain of uh, girls sports in Pena, okay? And you can't even start that conversation without talking about Carol Schramm. So we're kind of, it's uh, uh, not we're not going to roast you, but who knows how this goes, Carol? But uh, you know we, <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> it, roasting material right here. <laughs> that end of the table. But anyhow, I will try and facilitate it the best that I can. Is uh, we talk about things. If you want to bring certain things up. Uh, please do so. But I want to start with, first of all, with uh, everybody introducing themselves and who you, who are you? And uh, we'll start with this young man over to the right of Carol. Well, I'm Greg Cawthorn. Um, I teach at the high school, teach science, and I'm also coaching volleyball. I'm the head coach and the eighth grade uh, volleyball coach at, in our program. Okay. I'm Carol Schramm. I came here in 1965. I taught five years at Pena Junior High and moved on to the high school in 1970 and uh, <clears throat> coached, uh, taught, and was athletic director also. I'm Mary Cother and uh, I taught at Pena Junior High and Pena High School uh, starting in uh, 1978 and uh, was an athlete of Carol's, uh, probably since junior high, she's the one who kind of got us started with things where um, we didn't have sports until IHS until 1974, which every year I graduated. But I taught PE health into the yearbook and also coached uh, volleyball, basketball, and track what I was teaching before I retired. Okay. I'm Barry Heaton. I came here in 1967. Carol had already been here for several years, you know, and uh, I thought maybe she started the school here, but uh, <laughs> I came in as a teacher and assistant principal and basketball coach and track coach, and I did that for several years. And then I became athletic director, served in that capacity for a while, and then I became high school principal. And then I uh, went over as assistant superintendent to Bruce Winnicky. And then I went back to the high school as high school principal. And then I became superintendent and retired as superintendent. I'm Rhoda Deidre. I uh, came to Pena Schools in 1968, and this is our 50th anniversary, Carol, of our friendship, and as you know that. Okay, I taught at Pena <coughs> Junior High School for several years, and then when the ceiling fell in, I moved with the ninth grade over to the high school. We had split shifts, and my children, one was in the morning shift and one was in the afternoon shift, and I was in both shifts, and I never figured that one out. Uh, after junior high school, and I was, th I was there with Mr. Cornwell, I was there with Mr. Mullins, and Mr. Dunseth, and then I became assistant principal at the junior high school. And then we went over to the high school, and as a ninth grade teacher in some subjects, I became attendance officer at the high school, and then assistant <coughs> principal at the high school. And then I think I went to, I think I became 
assistant principal there at the high school and then back to Washington School as principal. Barry did all this to me, by the way. <laughs> and then principal at Washington School and then back to the high school as principal. And then I ended my career 25 years ago in 1993. Wow. And we may, we're competing with uh, <coughs> some, speaking of ceiling falling in, I hear some mm -hmm. Pounding up above. I don't know. We're competing with something today. She's doing a thorough cleaning. I think they are. I'm Nancy Vaudry, and I graduated from here in 74 with Mary. I came back and taught um, at the high school. I taught math, and then I later became the Washington School PE teacher. I coached. When I first started here, I coached volleyball, track, and basketball. And as the years went by, I ended up with just basketball. Okay, we'll get started here. And I might mention too that if you're watching this, you may have to, I mean, I'm standing right on top of the camera, so you're going to hear me real well, but uh, you may have to turn your, your volume up on your uh, video uh, <coughs> machines or on your computer uh, to listen to this. But, uh, you know, I, as I was preparing for this, one of the things that I was doing, Carol, I was, I was going back through and I'm, I'm looking on the IHSA website. And I'm looking at different uh, athletic activities there. And, and it, when you look at them, I kept thinking, oh, well, you know, okay, Carol did. You actually started basketball, the basketball program here. You the, did that for one year? Is that right? Pardon me, I'm sorry. Did you do that for one year? Yes. Coach, one year, yes. One uh, year. Na Nancy and I were, and she, she stayed on until she retired. And then I think Mary did it for three years. Mm -hmm. But you also did volleyball, mm -hmm. and you also did track. Yes. Okay. You did tennis. Tennis. And you had a badminton team, but the, I mean, but it really wasn't an interscholastic it, badminton yes, team, it was. was it? Okay. I couldn't find that in there. Yeah. But I know no, that. It was. Yeah, it was it's, early on. It was, it, that all started, uh, Al, and school year 73, 74, and then field hockey was in. There were five sports uh, that were started in school year 73, 74. And if I may, I, I want to make sure that everyone's aware that the programs were started. It wasn't, it wasn't me starting the programs. It was because of the movement to include girl sports in the Illinois High School Association and <coughs> superintendent at that time was uh, Carol Lau <coughs> and as I mentioned to you the other day I was actually on a leave of absence uh, working on my masters when he called me in the spring and said that this movement was starting would I be interested in uh, helping start the program and of course that really picked up my uh, antenna and said yes but but others included in, in helping to make sure that that all happened. Uh, Bruce Winnicky was the assistant superintendent, Stan Davis was the principal, and Barry Heaton was the assistant principal and also athletic director. So it was because of all those people, with me pretty much in the middle, but they, they, were, they were the foundation of build, starting the program. I know, but uh, one of the things too that, that people you know, take for granted, I think, is the time that it takes to be a head coach, and, and everybody uh, pretty well in here has has an idea. You, you're headed up an organization, or you've been the head coach of a of a program, and there's a lot of there, there's a lot of things, details that go into that, and not just after the game. It, it's it's during the course of the summers and and the, the winters and and whatever, and uh, the, that's the amazing thing that that I see here when I'm looking at all this stuff, and I. I don't, you did field hockey, um, and we didn't have an official softball program at the time, right. but you did get a lot of these girls together to, to, to play some softball. In the summer, right. One of the things, and, and we've got, uh, you know, with Greg and, and Carol and, and Mary, uh, we've been playing volleyball here since 1973. <clears throat> yes, it would have started the, actually it was a winter sport at that time, so it started yeah, late November, December, and, and, and so, went into the uh, January. So that would be 45 years that, that we've been playing that, and you three are the only three coaches that we've had in that. Right. And I, I looked up the statistics there. Uh, Carol, you had 549 wins, 226 losses in volleyball. That was a, a, a better than 70% uh, winning percentage. And then Mary was 
289 and 71. That was an 80 percent winning percentage. And Greg 155, 69 for 69 69 percent. Uh, the total winning percentage of those 43 years was 700 or 73 percent. That's amazing. Uh, that's I mean, how many programs around would want that? Is so uh, I want to start off a little bit with volleyball. And if you can talk about, uh, and then, then we'll go on to some other sports. And if anybody else has something special that they want to say, uh, please jump in and say it, and we'll get the, the camera on you. But, uh, Carol, you might want to talk about when you started the volleyball program. or sure. when. The volleyball uh, was an IHSA sport in, in the fall of 1973. Uh, the, as I said, the latter part of the fall, so actually early winter, and Nancy and Mary were both on that team. That, they were seniors at that time. Uh, we, had a, we had a brief ske uh, schedule, nothing like what there is today because there, there wasn't any state series that first year. And in fact, the first couple of years, I believe. Uh, these, these people were undefeated. And I, I think that it somewhat sticks in my mind we only played 10 matches. Uh, and, and ten, and so they were ten and zero, uh, and uh, I mean, it was it was a different game than what it is today, but it was, and and honestly, I didn't play volleyball. Uh, that was a sport that that I I didn't play at all in college. I played I played the others, but I I never played volleyball. So I was learning right along with them, and we did it in class. Barry was the athletic director, and made sure that we had some practice time. But as we mentioned the other day when I was talking to you, there was so much overlap because it was tennis to field hockey to volleyball. So there were, there were almost two sports going on all the time. They were, they were literally going from one practice to another. So at, when field hockey was finishing, volleyball had already started. And, uh, I mean, there were more, more people involved on a field hockey team than what you have in volleyball, but many of those went from one practice to the other, as did I. And, and uh, you know, I think, I think kids today some, maybe think about practice being a, a grueling type of, which at times it is. As I said, it's a different game. <laughs> but they were doing something that they had, all of a sudden, I have the opportunity to do this, uh, I love it, and I had to kick them out of the gym. They didn't want to go home. I, would you say that Carol, that's correct? Yes, Carol was in. She was in the gym hours with us, and then we would get done. <clears throat> excuse me. We would get done, and we'd always try to talk her into more time, more time. So she spent besides teaching, coaching in the gym, many many hours. And. I, and uh, Carol, you coached volleyball 29 years. Uh, is that right? Uh, I think, I saw, Somewhere I, in that I neighborhood. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and then and you don't see that longevity uh, anymore with a lot of a lot of coaches and and athletics. And Mary, I think you were at that time. How long were you the assistant coach before you became the head coach? A lot of those 29 years. It was uh, a lot. Probably most of them. I was going to say, I think I started, started coaching in 80, 1980. It was before I had two boys because then the two boys kind of grew up in the gyms with us while we were at practice. Right. They were Did generous. all of those sports start the same year? Yes. Yes. Well, I remember. Except basketball. Except yes. basketball. Right. Yeah. I remember. Uh, when they first started field hockey, I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did we, Barry. <laughs> One play. And the next thing I knew, they were playing in the state tournament. Right. Yeah. Good point. That was. And the five sports were what that, that started? You said five sports. Five right? sports. Tennis. Tennis started the season in the in the in August, and and then it was field hockey, and then it went to volleyball. <coughs> And then badminton and track and field was the fifth. And Carol did coach, but it was under GAA bowling. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. GAA bowling was in there too. Uh, except in, the, I've forgotten about that, and they went to state. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. I think yeah. the tennis team, I was looking through that, the tennis team was district winners right. uh, for a number of Right. Uh, number of different years. Yes, and and we have I have a really good picture uh, the very first year of well they were seniors yeah. uh, there were uh, two doubles teams and a singles uh, Carol Amling played singles and she went she went to qualify for state Mary and Polly were doubles partners and uh, Trish uh, Spinner uh, Win Spinner uh, and Kay Metzger Grohl were partners and they also went to state. Now, but we have a picture, or I have a picture of Barry holding, it was then at that time called a district uh, plaque, and we won the district. It was out there at Kitchell Park, and uh, we were a day or two younger then, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it was just so exciting, uh, because we, Payne was the underdog, naturally, I mean, we had never really heard of us, and, and we had uh, these exceptional uh, players uh, that just... They did great, and, and so we we got to go to state the very first year. And Nancy Mullins, Nancy Shrout Mullins, uh, helped as far as uh, needed some chaperone and, and a dri another driver. And, and so because we went to uh, Arlington Heights to play, that's I mean, it, that was quite an experience. You know, I, I remember back in those in in those days too. Everybody was playing tennis around here when, right. when the high school oh, yes. had their tennis. And that's what, I guess, the importance of a, of a high school program of any type. If, uh, you know, you'd go around when we had tennis here, and boys tennis and girls tennis, you know, everybody was playing tennis. So there were two or three uh, courts out the park, and there was four out at the high school or five out there, and it just seemed like it was tough to get a, get onto those and play because everybody liked playing it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, the tennis – it, dried up. It it dry, it, it, it went it went away for for a period. Of time. Uh, hopefully they'll they'll get uh, get back because there's there's so much carryover transfer from some of these sports. Uh, I mean you use you use the that's why our arms are and <laughs> can't even lift this one anymore. But uh, it's the same motion whether you're hitting uh, if you're hitting a, a serve in tennis or you're hitting a, a, a serve or a spike in volleyball. Or you're hitting hitting a clear or a smash in, in badminton or throwing throwing a softball. Same motion. So that's why I think that's why when when we <clears throat> when we were in volleyball, one of the things that, uh, and I I don't know. If, if Greg still does it or not, we always started our warm up with throwing a ball to get it, getting the shoulder opened, and, and it's the same it's the same motion. So you do. Yeah, yeah, we do. That's one of the the basic things that we teach our kids at sixth grade is this is how we warm up and how critical it is to warm up effectively to prevent injuries later on. And it's it's great because I mean that motion, as you said, is the same motion in so many different activities. I mean we use that. Throwing a ball was a comparison a lot while we're teaching the kids. Can you throw a ball, we ask them? Yeah, well, then you can serve a ball over. It's just going to be hand-eye coordination then. But, yeah, we still do that. And he learned that at six months of age. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine so. And I just want to touch on that a little bit because uh, Greg got to grow up with, uh, you know, learning from from two very, very good and accomplished uh, volleyball uh, coaches and teachers. And Greg, you might want to talk about what that was like. Uh, kind of, I mean, when was your earliest recollection of, of playing volleyball? I remember being in there three, four, five years old, it seems like. It was probably later than that. But I, at, at least my earliest memories are of being in there in kindergarten um, and running around and being yelled at, get off the court, you're going to trip somebody. <laughs> you know, get off the court. And I just like, no, let me, let me get in line. Let me hit one ball. Let me hit one ball. Let me set him. And um, I, I just, I, I loved it from then on. I mean, I know there was, there was times where I was, I was begging and pleading to not go do something else and stay there at practice. And even though it was a, an actual, you know, practice for them, but maybe me, I had a game and something else. I was wanting to stay and stay for practice instead of go to my game because I just, I love the sport. And it was one of those things that still, even to this day, boys don't have an opportunity to play in this area. And it's, um, it's neat because, uh, you know, we talk about the evolution of girls sports, but we're also seeing an evolution of boys sports in areas that were typically female dominated when they were conceived. 
such as you know as volleyball. We're seeing that move from Chicago suburbs down south. We're also seeing it move from the St. Louis area east. So um, not that it would ever get to Pena, but it's getting closer and closer. And, and um, you know, me being able to be in the gym while I was young gave me that passion for the game and the love of the game. Um, I just, I find it one of the most fascinating and dynamic sports that there are. And I'm fortunate to get to have been in there during that time. Memory serves me correctly. The IESA used to allow boys to play uh, on girls' volleyball teams, and you actually did that. You mm -hmm. and another one of the, I can't remember the, the, the guy's name, Luzader, was it? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the Luzader boys that uh, was able to play, and I remember watching that, but yeah, it's... I think there's a Rudy Zaratka also played uh, for St. Pat's, because St. Pat's had a team at that time as well. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it was, it, it was um, you know, not without its controversy at the time to do that, but um, I, I had seen two guys, two boys play it from Vandalia, I think if you guys yes. remember right. They had, yes. And then that's where I got this, because to me at that point in time, that playing volleyball was something that was never going to happen for me. I mean, I know mom and I looked into playing, you know, uh, for club teams, because I wanted to play so bad in the high school and see where that could lead, but there was no opportunity for that, but um, once I saw that in junior high and I, and I got to do that, I, I tell you what, I, I knew at the end of our eighth grade season, I was more upset at that ending than any of the girls were because I remember my comment was, you guys get to go on and do this. I don't. And, and I, that was something that just, just hit me really hard um, was, was the fact that I wasn't going to get to do this anymore. And I mean, it just, yeah, it, w it was good to get to do that during that, that brief time. And now, you know, um, IESA has added boys volleyball as an emerging sport in that as well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's changing. It's, a, it's, it's definitely a, a very interesting game to watch, and I, I love watching it, especially when, when people are out there, you know, laying it all on the line and the dives, and it's just so div the defensive end of that game is really intrigues me a lot. So, uh, anyway, uh, but uh, Carol, in, in your – any special memories? And I want to pan over here just a minute to with uh, Rhoda and open it up here, Rhoda, as far as when uh, when did you first meet Carol and any? Junior high school. She, she came in, I think, 67, I think. 65. I was there in the I think, yes. Because yeah. I was in Tower Hill for five right. years. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I really, I mean, I, I think you probably were prejudiced towards her because she's a Cub fan. And that was the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not the first person to tell well, We got that. a room full of Cub fans today. Barry's yes, a Cub did. fan and Nancy's a Cub yeah. fan. And Cardinals are out. Oh, oh. That's yeah. right. Too bad, so sad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. But do you have, do you have any uh, early stories about Carol that uh, you'd want to share? I know you came in with notes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Carol may, may not remember, but we had a, an organization because we went to all the activities at the high school, more or less, all the games and so forth, you know. And even at the junior high, high level, we kind of had our own little group. And the minute we were compatriots at the high school, we said, well, why can't the women run the chain gang? There was no reason, remember that, Barry? There was no reason why we couldn't do this. So we had an organization, we called it WEEP. We expect equal privileges. Privilege. We expect equal privileges. And it was uh, Nancy, Nancy Mullins, yeah. Carol, and myself. And so we got to be on the chain gang one time. <laughs> and then we were asked never please to try that again. I, I would imagine that you heard things over there that. that <laughs> You know, the refs were yelling at us, and we never understood why the refs were yelling at us. Because we love football, we knew what was going on. Yes, it's did. just the placement of the darn thing at the right place that they yelled at We us. had disagreement with uh, as to where the <laughs> as to where yes. where the uh, yes. where to actually place the uh, the stick. Yeah, <laughs> the standard or whatever. I can't yes. even remember what it's called. Barry, you remember that? I 
I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's so far probably, one those, probably one of those probably one of those things that you know, didn't yeah. want to remember. But hey, that's the first I've ever heard of that. That's really? a great story. Yes. Okay. Yep. Carol, so we talked. How did you get that one assignment? I, I don't remember. We fought, but we said we just went to the coaching staff at that time. I guess Carol said, "Why can't we?" Who was or the coaching who was staff? Was well, it? Who was in charge of the probably guys? Oh. Ben McCracken. Yeah, it would have been John yeah. McCracken. He came and, in '65. And uh, um, I, I don't recall. Uh, I, I'm sure Nancy was was the, the person who really got it got it uh, finished you know yeah. she, I think Bill Braswell at that time was the well Bill Braswell guy. and Mar he Marvin Sims Marvin Sims they were yeah. they were the uh, the main guys the, the chain gang guys uh, Marvin Sims was actually uh, the, the main man mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't happy <laughs> <laughs> and with good reason <laughs> Well, that was a reality check, even though we, you know, we, everybody knew the weak organization as far as we women go. You know? And they thought, oh, right, you're getting in there. Well, we didn't last. Well, at least it was it was one game, and that's a, that's. That was good, though. Really, uh, there you go. That's, that's really a neat story. It, it, it humbled us just a little tiny bit. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I think the interesting thing about that is that you, you guys – Watched the game enough that you really knew what was going on. You knew and what was going on. I mean, and plus the fact that we moved from ticket takers to chain gang because mm -hmm. that's the only thing the women could could do. That's a better seat there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. you, you definitely is exactly. Yeah. Carol, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, volleyball just uh, for just a little bit more. Uh, when you think back in your the the time that you coached, even the time after that doesn't matter. Uh, do you have one team that you thought, hey, that was a special team? And I'm sure you all you thought all your people that you taught were special. Uh, I, I know, but is one team that sticks out in your mind more than others? Uh, well, uh, I I would say I agree with you that each team is special. And uh, my favorite time with with the girls was during practice. I honestly was not a very good game coach. I, I wasn't very good at making adjustments. Um, so that part of the game was a, a kind of a failure point with me. And I depended on, on the, the other coaches on the bench to help with that, um, seeing things. And, and Kim Honenkamp was a person who, she, she was with me probably the longest as far as uh, tenure, number of years, uh, and, and 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 actually asking some of the players on the bench, what you know, what are you seeing? What would you do here um, to change things up? Whatever. Uh, the team that that was the went to state, and back then, mm -hmm. you know, it was two classes. Uh, and that that particular group, and and uh, I saw Marsha Metzger. Uh, Silkinson's o over the past weekend, and and she actually was talking about it, and she she reminded me that we had they had gone to a couple of camps that summer, and that was probably the evolution of of actually going to a camp in Pena, and and then going to had, we had somebody come in and and help with a with a camp, <clears throat> and and so they had that particular group. They had they had really worked together quite a bit during the summer, and then uh, went on to uh, to go on to the state tournament. and And that particular year, it, well, it was up at ISU, but it was played in the field house mm -hmm. as opposed to in the gymnasium. And, and I remember that game. Today. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a there's a long story uh, about that particular match that we lost. Um, uh, in in essence, it was a. It was a, a scorekeeping error by the official scorekeeper. Our school scorekeeper was Carla Puckett Thompson. She had everything right. The official scorekeeper had it wrong. And, and to, to say it as simply as possible, uh, they, our number 10, who was Jana Day yes. Giffen, was serving. Or Janet Giffen Day. I'm sorry, I had that in reverse order. Uh, she, 
she was she was serving, and at that time the game you could only score when you served. So she's serving, scoring points. The other team who had a number had her that player in, in the very same position as Jana was number ten. They were giving the our points to that girl, to that team. Do you remember that? Yes. John Bohannon was principal at the time, and and I thought he was maybe going to be arrested after the game <laughs> <laughs> because he literally came out of, of the stands. But so we lost. And I mean, it wasn't just one or two points. It was, it changed the, whole it changed the I mean, here, of course, we didn't know that that was happening on the book. On the score, when up, up ahead, uh, whatever, you know, the, the numbers that are showing for people to see, they had it correct. The only person who did not have it correct was the official scorekeeper. And that's why it, it didn't get changed because she was the official scorekeeper. Couldn't that Absol have been a correctable error? Oh, it was well, a correctable right. error, except the referee did not had to come down off of the stand and come over and, I mean, she would have known that that was not correct because she is signaling for service, <laughs> but th she did not do that. I mean, we once once Carla brought it to our attention because it didn't become it didn't become knowledgeable to us until we we lost the serve, they served, we got the serve back, and then all of a sudden they called us out of service order because they didn't have Jana down for having served. So then it became known. Okay, there's a huge <laughs> huge problem here, and it was correctable, but they would not correct it. I still have the letter from Ola Bundy, who was the executive director of a real director of uh, of the Illinois High School Association, apologizing for that error. Even though at the time she said there was no error. Yes. I, I would really like to get a copy of that letter. Just oh, maybe yeah. we can put that uh, in in some of the archives sure. with that too. I, I, That'd be an interesting letter to have. Yes, it, it was. And That's it, first I mean, I've heard of that story too. No, it's uh, it, and oh, there, there's yeah. there's more to the story, but th that's the essence of the story, and and. Uh, as I said, uh, I mean, everybody was very, very upset. I, I mean, all of us. I mean, what do you do? And we had just gotten this big speech the night before about sp sportsmanship and how, and back then, volleyball coaches sat. You, you weren't allowed to stand up. If you stood up for a reason other than to call a timeout, well, th that was poor sportsmanship. And, I mean, I didn't stand up until... They called us for out of order, and, and then Carla is, she, like I said, she was the one who knew exactly what had happened because she had it correct, but they, they weren't going to buy it. You mentioned some of the girls on that team, but who, I mean, can you, sure. any other ones? Uh, well, uh, Janet, I'm, I'm going to use their maiden names because I, I'm sure I would have their married names messed up, but Janet Arnold, uh, Janelle Maton, Jana Day, Jana Giffen, I'm sorry, Jana Giffen, I'm still doing that. Uh, 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 Marsha Metzger, Donna Metzger, uh, Sarah Tamman, Sarah Tamman um, Susan, uh, Susan, uh, Spinner. Susan Spinner. Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, and back then we were, we only had 12 players. Uh, Was that for Hannah on it? Would she, she have been there? Been, yeah. I, because when you said yeah, John, she, because I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, Ann was on it, and probably Deb was on it also. She's younger, but she may have been on it also. Yeah. I, and I apologize for anyone I've missed. I, I, off the top of my head, I just can't. I'm, I'm trying to go through that particular class. Uh, but, you know, they were, they were also involved in tennis, field hockey. Those same girls played on the field hockey team that was in the final four. Didn't you say it to the... Denise the, Byers, maybe? Yes. I bet, yeah. Susan Spinner, Maisie Arce, yes. she went on to play... She went on it? to play field hockey <clears throat> over at Eastern. At yes. Eastern. Was a, was a really solid field hockey player there, linebacker. Okay, linebacker. Mm -hmm. Well, and her and her son was a pretty good one, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, so her, not only did both of her sons. The points that Jana had got serving. But they got them. I, I understand that, but then you also lost for serving out of order. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah. So when that we didn't get served, they it went back to them. It was it was really really bad. It's a bizarre story. Really. And 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 it was all see, 
course, there was no videotaping or anything, so they couldn't go back to that. And the reason that Ola finally, yes, said there was a mistake because the reporters are, are typing in all this as it's being done correct, what they are seeing correctly, and then there's this big <laughs> stop. It just stopped because they didn't know how to put it in there, what had really <laughs> happened. So it, you know, it was interesting. Let's hit just a little bit more on volleyball before we move on to another sport. And Mary, yeah, what about you as far as teams, any, any team that you think, hey, this was, not that they were the best team, but maybe they were uh, something that made them special. And it's, I know that's hard to do. It's, it's hard to. It's really hard to do when you uh, coached that many years. Um, I, I just, um, I've enjoyed all, all the teams I've coached. Um, to say um, which ones stood out. Um, gosh, I'm afraid. To, I'm afraid to give dates. <laughs> but I mean, I enjoy each each group of girls that came through that um, I coached were special um, in a lot of different ways. Um, I enjoyed all all of them. Um, I know one of the girls that did go on and play at college, uh, Jenny Millen. She went and played at Millen, um, helped me out. Um, that group was a, good, was a good group. Was that the, and uh, her yeah. sister Julianne was oh, yeah, pretty good uh, yeah, yeah, volleyball yeah. player. That was a good group when those two girls were on the court at the same time with one another. I mean, you talk about not being able to get a ball past somebody. Right. And if you're the defense on the other team, that constant threat of getting your head taken off with a ball between the two of them, that was a good group of kids that, that went through there. And that's, that's why it's hard to kind of pick out a certain group. I'll, I'll open this up to the three of you and, and well, to the six of you. Uh, is there anybody that stands out to you that, boy, I didn't think they'd ever be a, a volleyball player, but – when it was all said and done, and I got a couple guys in, in football that I'm thinking, okay, then you know this person, this kid, he's going to try. And by by the time it got all said and done, it's a pretty good football player. Uh, well, before before I even think about that, Al, I'm, I'm going to interject. Uh, uh, Denise Sarver came to mind when Mary was talking about the McMillan girls. Uh, Denise uh, had a full ride scholarship to Drake, and she was in pre med. Uh, <clears throat> outstanding volleyball for, player for Pan, and she's still on the top five list uh, in, in some categories. But she tore her ACL her her uh, senior year at the very last basketball game. It was in the regional, and uh, so she wasn't able to compete in track in, in high school. And then they red she did a red shirt at at Drake, but went on to compete her final three years. And they offered her, since she had been a red shirt, uh, wanted her to stay for that fifth year, but uh, since she was going into the medical field, she decided that she needed to just forget volleyball and, and stay with uh, her profession. But, um, so I, I would say she was. I'm, I'm, just from a viewer's standpoint, to me, the one I always remember is Janie Gruber. Oh, Janie, and awesome. seeing her when they, especially if they miss hit the ball on the other side, her eyes would oh. just light up, and that ball was going straight down. Yeah, you're right. You know, I, right. she just to me, she was the the first of the uh, of many. Of the first, she was one yeah, of the first, first ones that just really took it by the horns and yeah, she said, did. "I'm a, I'm a player." Absolutely. You know, it, it's funny too because uh, a couple weeks a week ago we got had the old baseball and softball players, 70, 80, 90 years old, uh, in the, in that range. And some of these names, okay, that are that that we're talking about, the Grubers, okay, uh, it would have been, I guess, Janie's. Well, her her dad, her grandpa, uh, was probably back in in those early days where he oh, he yeah, coached some spinners in that group. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot yeah. of the spinners, uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and and that group of people. Those guys were synonymous with, with nicknames. They're just some of the most intriguing nicknames I've ever heard in my life. But uh, I yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but the, I mean a lot of the other ones though too. And uh, you know, you talk about one end of town was was uh, was the hunk end, and the other end of town was the flat hammers. Yeah. Okay, and then the the rest of the town was the hill. You know, it, it just uh, and the flat hammers and the, the hunk enders. They, and, I, and I don't want to get into all that, but uh, you don't want to get caught in one of those areas after night, or you don't really ever want to get caught in one of those areas. You want to be in your own area, but uh, it, so it was, it, those were unique uh, times. But getting back uh, to your question, uh, somebody that comes to my mind immediately was Sarah Tamman, uh, because and and uh, Sarah Sarah became a, a really really good setter. Uh, only because she just worked her tail off. The summer before the, her varsity, senior year, uh, I, she, she wanted to do that, and uh, she, those girls, uh, they, wanted, they wanted their, their team to, to go as far as the previous one had, or for, go on further, actually, naturally. And uh, you know, I just talked to Sarah and said, you know, if, if you want, if you really want to do this, it's probably going to take a little bit of extra work, and she she went above and beyond, and and did a really really nice job. So to me, she was a in that particular position, she was a, maybe an unlikely person. We, you know, we talked about that. Remember, we talked about her being so much more improved. And I think she went on to yeah, Lakeland. I can't really, yeah, she, she did. Yep, you're right. She did. And I had forgotten that. She, she was a, a really solid player at Lakeland. Greg, you kind of saw this from a different perspective because you were growing up. You were a gym rat, so to speak. Um, any, any particular teams there? And, and you've had an opportunity before you came to Panda. You coached at Argena uh, for, for a few years. But any particular players, any particular teams in Pena that you saw that you thought, wow, that's a special team? Well, I, a lot of them in the 90s, I remember, because at that point in time, Carol had let, had given me and Scott Slater a job of sitting up in the uh, band room at the high school and when the, the curtains used to open right. and videotaping. And I remember a conversation you had with us after about what you say up there is on video, so when we watch that video, whatever you guys have said up there, we can hear. Uh, but um, I don't know if you remember yeah, that. No, but I, there maybe some, sounds from there were some coaching points that you put across. <laughs> I'm sure but, there was. No, we, um, I, I remember those teams, Denise Sarver, I remember the, uh, that group. I remember Stacy Slater's group and Ashley Abel, that group I thought was, was a good team. And then, uh, you know, the teams with the, the McMillan sisters on it. I mean, there's just been so many of them that 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 come to mind. And you know, um, I know that at the end of Mom's uh, coaching, uh, we had that group that set the school record, and that had um, Alyssa Waddington, Jesse Cash's group on it. And then that following year, my first year of doing it, um, you know, was probably one of my most memorable years because we made an Elite Eight appearance, and that was had a lot of the the same girls that had played the previous year. So like. Allie Schoonover, um, uh, Hannah Fundman, girls like that, Raven Horse Simpke, Nadine yeah. Vaughn, those groups, Charlie Lett, those group, those girls, I'm, I'm telling you, as far as competitive, I have not had a group that has been that competitive. I mean, even at practice, they didn't want to lose a drill at practice. They didn't want to let somebody get, you know, one more than them at anything. I mean, that's just, I think that just, you know, shows the tradition that we've had in our program and in our girls sports programs that we just have these competitors and there's so many of them to name that for every one we name we'll forget four or five of them that we go back and go oh yeah yeah that would be one but and also along along with the competitiveness well, they were outstanding academic students and I, I think that speaks volumes uh, <laughs> There wasn't a time you had to worry about, all right, well, we have someone ineligible. It wasn't even, it didn't even cross your mind because they had the flashlights, they studied on the bus, that was what they did. And they helped each other, again, we talked about this the other day, they helped each other with their studies. They were competitive athletically and academically, but they were friends and they wanted everybody to do well. So. I, I think that it correlates. Yes, many of many of those players that went on went through college and are 
doctors, her lawyers, her teachers, you know, teachers. In, yes. in the, in the uh, yeah, I was thinking about that also. The the uh, the one plaque uh, that was presented by the Booster Club, uh, and again there were twelve names on there. Four of those people are doctors, uh, and. Wow. Uh, and, and the others are all in uh, some type of profession of health care or education. It's, it's really incredible. Well, I want to move on to another sport here. And I the next one I want to go to is uh, basketball, because I know, Nancy, you said you may have to leave at 4 o'clock. Uh, Carol, you were the, uh, the first head coach in basketball. Okay, one of the constants, though, uh, throughout all of that time was Nancy Vaudry. I think she's started as a coach there. And when was the last year that you finished up coaching, Nancy? Two years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago. You're out this is way. my fourth year out. And how many years did that make you? Maybe 35 years. And you saw some very special times uh, mm -hmm. at the time. Any particular that uh, you would want to bring out as uh, any special memories? And I know the one year the girls won. Well, the year the, year the girls got second state, that's... That's pretty special. You can't ever, ever change that because that's just something that you always, always remember. Um, I remember after that how down they were. You know, you were saying Connor and them. I just remember after that going up to Julianne McMillan saying, "You don't understand what you have done yet, and what you have done for Pena." And she told me the other day she repeated that a couple of years ago to her girls. She goes, I used your speech, which kind of worried me, because I'd given her another speech <laughs> one time that I was hoping she didn't repeat. Um, but that, that group, just really, they worked well together. They enjoyed it. They enjoyed playing. Um, of course, you know, you've got to like coaching your own child. So I enjoyed the year Stephanie came through. Um, I enjoyed the coaches I worked with. See what were some other years? There was there's there's always years that you just well with the year you went you lead you lead eight ninety six yeah yeah the year that well and again it was Alyssa, Jess, mm -hmm. um, Charlie and that was year um, Ali Schoonover tore her ACL about halfway through the season so you know people had pretty much written us off and those girls just played. They well, just played I met the hard. year with Dave when Dave Curry was coaching. 90, that was that was the, another group you said, Ashley Abel, Becky Byers, Stacy Slater, right, um, Brianna Byers, Byers uh, what was another one? Um, Calista White was in it, Lacey Pinkston, Dana Miller. Um, but it, you know, like, so just to reiterate what they said, these kids came and they would work hard, they would bring their studies on the bus, they would do anything they had to to make it. And that year, that group of kids with Ashley and Stacy and those guys, I think five or six of them were valedictorians. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're talking, oh yeah, they definitely did what they were supposed to. Well, and, and you know, Carol, you kind of touched on, on it too, and I think the thing that sets a lot of the, the, the girls' sports apart from the boys' sports is that the boys kind of got, they took it, took it for granted. You know, that it's, hey, we've been playing these sports forever. Football started in 1909. I think basketball, Barry, I don't know if you remember when 1911 or something like that. And there's some re several years we didn't have a team because of the war. <laughs> Wait, but, do you remember? No, no. <laughs> the only reason I'm saying that is because I know Barry, Barry's a statistical fiend. And, and uh, I, I thought maybe he would <laughs> he would have done some research at one time or another that, that they remember on that. But uh, anyhow, I think the boys took sports for granted, where the girls, they got to watch the boys and they got to be cheerleaders and all that other stuff. But then when it got to be their time to shine, okay, this was, uh, you know, they really understood what it was, you know, what a what a great deal it was to, and a privilege it was to do that. And, uh, it was Christmas. It was. Right. Yes. It was, yes. No yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Let's get on with competitive sports. I, I want to get everybody's opinion here. We're talking about basketball. Who would you think, and, and we're not trying to play favorites or anything like this, who's the most, maybe, we'll ask you two questions, okay? One is, who's the most memorable player, okay? And, or, and it may be the most memorable play that you saw, okay? And the other one is, who do you think the best basketball player was that we had 
here in Pena? I go first. Okay. Oh, no. No, that's not fair. In, in my opinion, that uh, Olivia Lett Olivia. was the best I, I ever saw play here in yep. Pena. I agree. I agree. But that being said, <laughs> I agree 100%. I mean, you know, how can you question it? She went on and played all through college. She went to the pros. You can't question that fact. She's still coaching at a college level. Um, that being said, it's awful hard to not put Julianne McMillan in there for a simply, she played a different role. Her team depended, I mean, that was the whole difference in the championship game. They shut her down. When you shut somebody down, it's really hard when that's your person, your go-to person. Um, and the other person I would put in there too, and it was totally different era, is Rachel Epley. I think she may have been the star of of saying this is what girls sports can be, girls basketball yeah. can be like. Um, I agree. Again, it's a totally yeah, different yeah. era. So, the, it, was she as good as Olivia? Was she as good as Julianne? Yeah. You don't know because it was such a different time. It's kind it was of a different right. ball game. It's kind of like comparing Mike Tyson to Joe Lewis, yeah, uh, you know, and you that know, type of thing. The Who way things the, evolve you know. in sports, you can't compare, you know, early with the late. Um, what would Ann Bohannon and Nebby Bohannon been like if they were playing now? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. They were yeah, in our first year. Right. Yeah. What would they be like now? Who knows? Nancy, you want to touch on a couple of the girls on the uh, on that uh, state uh, second place team? Uh, you know, we already talked about Julianne McMillan. Jennifer McMillan was on that. Uh, Jenny was one of our first ones off the bench. Um, Wendy Kinsey was our point guard. And very good point guard, you know, one of those kind of what you need, because she was just kind of just half crazy enough to try things, you know. Um, Amy Byers, Kim Byers. She's an Easton girl. Elise Easton. Yeah. Elise. Yes, that's who the other one. Those were our five starters. Jenny was off the bench, usually early. Um, gosh. By the way, I do have a. I think it's a, a 24 by 24 picture in my my basement weight room that of that team with all their their uh, the uh, ticket stubs from each one of those, and also they had all the girls that you guys uh, got an autograph yeah. from. So I, you know, that that was a very special team. I agree, and I agree was with the uh, Rachel Kristen Epley was one that I was Kristen I was thinking people are going to forget about her. Lindsay Amling, Kristen Chamberlain, yeah. Lindsay Amling. I think Kristen might have been one of the starters as opposed to one of those others I said. Julianne Scherzer. Um, you know, when I sit back and think about it, Kaylee Smith. Yes. Um, and there you go. You know, you're going to forget somebody. Oh and, yeah. And I know. I, I know. I have. You know, so. Oh, April Johnson. Um, and some of those kids knew. We're probably not going to see the light of day on this team, but gosh, this is going to be special. Pretty good though, Nancy. Pretty good recall. Yes. Yeah. On that. Yeah. I'm sure I forgot somebody, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> but I can remember when um, Carrie first came here. And that was his first year. And he coached at Nokomis before that. And Lindsay Amling did something in practice. I mean, just totally cut somebody off going through, just the way you wanted to do it. And he goes, where'd she come from? And I'm like, you apparently don't pay attention to JV games because when we played your <laughs> JV last year, she took out your best player coming through the lane just like that. <laughs> so you apparently don't watch those things. <laughs> Okay, Rhoda? I have a question. Uh, Rachel Epley, didn't she score a thousand points? Yes. Yes, I believe so. Yes. I think yeah. yes. she was the she first one. She would have been the first yeah. one, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned her because she's somebody that would have been forgotten because it was early early on. Yes. Yeah, that was exciting. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Barry, you've already you wanna recant anything or you you're not that I'm I'm not I'm not uh, taking the odds with Olivia Lett. I think, you know, those, those three girls, uh, boy, it would be great if you had them all on the same team. Wow. Oh, wow. That, that was one of the things Dave King asked me if I had to pick a team. I saw, I saw that Olivia Lett one time make a three-quarter court pass, non-looking pass, to a girl for a layup, and I haven't seen any basketball player, male or female, do that. <laughs> and the girl caught it. Yeah, she caught it, put it in. Yeah. Mary, you had three years of coaching basketball, but I mean, 
kind of wrap it up. You kind of you, you agree with what these the other ladies say here about the basketball group of girls, or? Yeah, it was. I mean, I came in after Carol, right, mm -hmm. and had three years Nancy with Nancy, and um, it was it was a learning experience. And, and that started, what was that, 79 or something like that when they started? 79 or 80. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I will say 79, okay, so we're talking uh, 20, 30, 30-some 30, uh, 30 years that we've been playing basketball, and you two ladies were the only two head coaches, are only two female head coaches that the program's ever had. I don't know if you guys right. knew that or not. No, I hadn't thought about that. Not means one way or another. I mean, it just. And it was also uh, the the year of the split shift, yes. and I remember that well because we had you either practiced at five thirty in the morning or uh, you practiced in one of the green weenies, and and uh, <laughs> it, if there was because everything had to be played at the high school, which is now what the ju the junior high building, but everything had to be played there, uh, so that was really tough. Really, really tough. You might have had a, a, a game tonight before, got home at 11 o'clock, and had to be at practice at 5.30 the next morning. That was uh, the it, worst time. It was... Uh, I have one question. What's a green weenie? <laughs> it's Washington <laughs> I was going to guess that. But. <laughs> and that was also, and, and I remember that so vividly because... The boiler system, the heating oh. system, was not what it is today, and that was before a custodian was on duty. So I had to go down into the boiler room, and be there, go down to the boiler room, and turn on the switch for the heat to come on to the to come off of the the nighttime level. I guess I don't know. I just they just told me what to do. I didn't question it, uh, so that there'd be heat in the building, uh, and and uh, I got to go through the. The, uh, the double shift t twice in my t career, mm -hmm. which I was like, oh my goodness, Th that was, but, and this is totally away from what we're here for, uh, the, 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 the teachers, the staff of, of the two, bu two buildings, the junior high and the high school, they were incredible. Right. Absolutely incredible because quality education still Took place, and it was it was it's it's uh, something that needs. I think those, those and I, I you know you can't possibly name all of them, but we were all here, right? Yes. Were you here for, well, yeah, we were all here. And for we're, we're both, both Greg shifts. was a student, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, wow, just just something. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it again, but, no. <laughs> but but they they made they made a difference in the lives of those people who were those kids who were going to school. And, okay. you know, before, before we end the basketball, uh, Laura called me. Yeah. Uh, 